We're at number two now. We're doing number two. Number two, the second video of the day. What are you going here? The second video of the day. Chat is all live. Okay, go live. Confirm. Go live. All right, this is number two. This is Daniel's prayer. We're doing number two. Starting the live stream. Okay, number two, there you go. Daniel's prayer, number two, the live stream. We're doing Psalms today. I'll tell you which one it's gonna be, okay? This is a video number 41B, and it's Psalm number 30. We're doing no, Psalms number 38. Okay, Psalm number 38. So without further ado, let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, uh, you know, we're just, uh, we're just shocked about the status of the world, you know, and how far down, you know, professionals have become, how complacent people have been about the Bible, your holy word, how, how people don't really care too much anymore, right? They, they've been tested and they've been tried. They've been blinded by uh, the pandemic with uh, looking to science to solve their problems. All the time, science has become the god of this world. You know, natural knowledge instead of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. And the preachers that are in the pulpits, they don't even know your word. They don't even administer basic things like salvation and rebirth. And, and, the, and they don't even know, they're not even that. And they're not even, don't know nothing about the Holy Spirit and feel like or speaking in tongues the way the Bible says so or the gifts of the Spirit in the churches. It's just easier to keep people dumbed down. And, and not knowing anything, just smile on their face and don't tell them to purify, purify their hearts. Don't tell them to get ready for the rapture. Don't even bring up anything about anything out of the ordinary. Just bring up some fables and, and stories, uh, you know, and foolishness. And smile on their face, tell them love is everywhere in the air and everything's okay. And you can watch anything you want, do anything you want, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Life's a party. All right, and, and, and you know, you say in your word that uh, you know very few people get to heaven because the way to heaven is narrow, and few get there. But the way to destruction is broad, right? And that's right there. I'll tell you what scripture it is. Oh, that's why I get angry sometimes. Okay. So you have to offer give me a okay, way to destruction is broad. Okay, that's in uh, Matthew chapter seven verse thirteen, the narrow gate. Okay, it says, um, "For wide is the gate." And broad and easy to travel is the way and path that leadeth the way to destruction and eternal loss. And there are many who enter through it. That's a Christian standard Bible. Enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and, and the road broad that leads to destruction. And just look up that in your Bible that you use every day. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 Okay All right All right, and, and actually you know it might go to uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 through 20 uh, in the King James version. What's it say? Uh, okay, here it comes All right and this is a Bible Gateway, BibleGateway.com. Enter by the narrow gate, 
For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Okay? So is that something to get angry about when people are not telling you the truth? I would think so. It boils my blood. But you can't get angry, okay? You have to be nice about everything. So, Father, we pray for everybody. We don't mean to offend nobody. We just want to try to get it down to the truth. Okay? I'm going to post this scripture right here by the BibleGateway.com where you can see it. Let me see what we got here. All right. Oh, people have already seen my video. Okay. Now we'll go right here. Paste it. Okay, and because I got excited in my last video, I have to edit some of those words I used. You know, uh, I didn't cuss at anybody or anything. But, you know, people might say that I'm not, you know, I didn't say a nice I was nice. Okay, so. Oh, that's the way we are. That's the kind of society we live in. We just can't be to tell the truth. You just can't say what's on your heart. You have to uh, pl put plaster on it or something. You have to cover it up. Put it under a bushel or something. You have to disguise what you're saying. Okay, this one is, uh, oh yeah. Um. Okay, uh, okay. Narrow gate. Okay. I'll put hell. I'll put heaven. I think people understand hell and heaven, right? Okay. Broad destruction. And I'll put destruction. All right, maybe even for disaster. All right, there you go. That should make you uh, cringe right there. That, you know, it says right there in black and white, right? That many people, most people aren't even going to go to heaven, okay? Most people won't even get to heaven because it says uh, narrow is the way to life and few that find it. But broad is the way to the hell. That's what it says. Uh, the um, few get to heaven and lots more get to hell. Okay? Most people, it says basically in the plain English, most, go to, most of the people are going to hell. And you can see that because, you know, I know that. You know, I woke up one day just like Paul. And um, like Jesus, you know. His spirit showed me visions and things, you know, and it's like scales were in my eyes. And then, you know, when I opened my eyes, the scales fell off, and I realized the whole world all around us, right, is not saved. The whole world is just walking around in darkness. Though that goes for doctors and preachers and government leaders and everybody uh, in darkness. They don't even know what's going on. And and then you wake up and you say, well, how how can they, we let these people know? So I, I put the websites, I made all the websites possible. If you go to Glorious Mercy and DanielsFire.com, you see all GloriousMercy.com and, da and DanielsFire325.com. You see all the websites I made and information so, uh, you go to the online altar, get saved anytime, get the Holy Spirit. You go to the uh, healing online, uh, healing of your heart room right there online, just between you and God. I show you how to uh, draw close to God, all right? This uh, information was good to, uh, if you had death disease, right? 
and that's the place that you need to go first, you know. Oh, and see your doctor, of course, but in between seeing your doctor and everything, go to that healing, healing, healing room of your heart and see what God can do for you. Give him a chance, okay? And I would trust him uh, uh, more than anyone else, okay? Because uh, with all else fatal, at least you're going to heaven. And in the long run, uh, you're going to have a glorified body and be made all new and healthy and even more than what you were before with a, a glorified eternal body and uh, that never dies. Never grows old or ages. Can you imagine that? Now, how about that? Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the psalm. And it's going to be psalm. This is uh, video number 40. Uh, 1b and it's psalm 38 okay and that's what we're going to do i'm going to find my uh e sword there we are and we're going to go to psalm 38 and the reason we're going through the book of psalms is because it's the relationship between david and god uh, uh, God, God said David was a man after his own heart and God and David were inseparable of course they had some difficulties here and there but um, uh, David is an example of a man after God's own heart and what God would listen to okay All right, now let me see. All right, Psalm 38. One. There you go. And the name of this is Psalm 38. Do not forsake me, O Lord. See, I told you about what we preach about the first hour is um, what we preach about the first hour is what the Psalms are usually going to be about. Okay, verse 1, Psalm 38, verse 1, a David Psalm, and this is going to be the NLT, okay? The National Living Translation. Psalm 38. Do not forsake me, O Lord. Psalm 38, verse 1. A Psalm of David asking God to remember him. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your rage. Your arrows have struck deep and your blows are crushing me. Three, because of your anger, my whole body is sick. My health is broken because of my sins. Verse 4. My guilt overwhelms me. It is a burden too heavy to bear. Verse 5. My wounds fester and stink because of my foolish sins. Verse 6. I am bent over and wracked with pain. All day long I walk around with grief. I walk around filled with grief. Verse 6. I am bent over and wrecked with pain. All day I walk around filled with grief. Verse 8. I am exhausted and completely crushed. My groins, my groins come from an anguished heart. Oh. My groans. Okay. Verse 8. I am exhausted and completely crushed. My groans come from an, an anguished heart. Verse 9. You know what I long for, Lord. You hear my every sigh. Verse 10. My heart beats wildly. My strength fails. And I am going blind. Verse 11. My loved ones and friends stay away, fearing my disease. Even my own family stands at a distance. Verse 12. Meanwhile, my enemies lay traps to kill me. Meanwhile, my enemies lay traps to kill me. Those who wish me harm make plans to ruin me. 
All day long they plan their treachery. Verse 13, but I am deaf to all their threats. I am silent before them as one who cannot speak. Verse 18, I choose to hear nothing and I make no reply. Verse 15, for I am waiting for you, O Lord. You must answer for me, O Lord my God. Verse 16, I prayed, do not let my enemies gloat over me or rejoice at my downfall. Verse 17, I am the, I am on the verge of collapse, facing constant pain. Verse 18, but I confess my sins. I am deeply sorry for what I have done. Verse 19, I have many aggressive enemies. They hate me without reason. Verse 20, they repay me evil for good and oppose me for pursuing good. Verse 21, do not abandon me, O Lord. Do not stand at distance, my God. Verse 22, come quickly to help me, O Lord, my Savior. Amen. Now how about that one? Okay, let me see how much, uh, where we're at. Let me see. Okay, let me see if, uh, here I am live. Let's see what the music sounds like. I know somebody's over there. Oh, and see your doctor, of course, but in between the healing, healing, healing room of your heart and see what God... Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Now, we got that one established. Let me see. I got some thumbs up from uh, Miguel, from Mary Ellis, from Axe Guard, twice, three times, from Vic, I love, Axe Guard again, Linda, Alex, Adrian, Terrence, Brad Brumera, Tiny, Sarah Hen, Sarah Hen. All right, and MD, and the list just keeps going on. Okay. All right. Now let me see. What I need to do is, uh, okay, let's see. Let me go back to that Bible. Now let's put a King James version here. I got, uh, no. I'm going to read it for the King James, okay? Make sure my cord's in there. Okay, there it is, okay. Do not forsake me, O Lord. The King James Version. Do not forsake me, O Lord. Psalms 38, 1. A Psalm of David. To bring to remembrance, O Lord. Rebuke me not in thy wrath. Neither chasten me in thy displeasure. Verse 2. For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. Verse 3, There is no soundness in my flesh because thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones because of thy, my sin. Verse 4, For mine iniquities are gone over mine head, as in heavy burden they are too heavy for me. Verse 5, My wounds stink, and are corrupt because of my foolishness. Verse 8, 6. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. Okay. Verse 7. For my loins are filled with a lonesome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. Verse 8. I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of my, the disquietness of my heart. Verse 9, Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. Verse 10, my heart panteth, my strength faileth me, and as for the light of mine eyes, it also has gone from me. Verse 11, 
my lovers and my friends stand afar off from my sore, and my kinsmen stand afar off. Verse 12, They also that seek after my life lay snares for me, and they that seek my heart speak mystery of things and imagine deceits all day long. Verse 13, But I, as a deaf man, heard not, and I was as a dumb man, and openeth not his mouth. Verse 14, Thus I was a man that heareth not, and whose mouth are no reproofs. Verse 15, For in thee, O Lord, do I hope that you will hear, O Lord my God. Verse 16, For I said, Hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me, when my foot slippeth, they magnify themselves against me. Verse 17, For I am ready to halt, and my sorrow is continually before me. Verse 18, For I would declare mine iniquity, and I would be sorry for thy sin. Verse 19, But mine enemies are lively, and they are strong, and they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. Verse 20, They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries, because I follow the, the thing that is good. Verse 21, Forsake me not, O Lord, O my God, be not far from me. Verse 22, Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. And this is King James Version, Psalms 38, 1 through 22. Now, I'm going to read this in the Message Bible. Let me just see one thing, okay? I'm going to read it in the Message Bible. Do not forsake me, O Lord. And remember, you know, hey, have, going to heaven, a few a few people going to heaven, and the most people going to hell. Okay, so uh, are we going to heaven, or are we going to end up in hell? Okay, because uh, if most people are going to, if uh, most people are going to hell, and a few people are going to heaven, we ought to be doing everything we can to um, uh, stack it up in our favor that we're going to be going to heaven. By being in front of the Lord because we know he told those for foolish virgins what? He says, he can't open up to you because I don't know you in Matthew 25. And then uh, uh, we uh, got to make sure that we take the ex uh, our lamps are filled with oil and they're trimmed up and we take extra oil with us because the foolish virgins took, did not take no extra oil. And we get the extra oil by basking in front of the Lord. Okay, by studying our Bible. For looking for the truth. Not relying on our pastors or other people. But we're looking for the truth. Okay? And um, we're, we're asking the Holy Spirit for the truth. us the truth. He wrote us the Bible. Okay? We'll make sure we have the Holy Spirit. Make sure we're reborn. We got the Holy Spirit and be baptized in water. Now, the baptism in water, that's just water, right? But uh, if God says you be baptized in water, then you be baptized in water. If God said you be baptized in Kool-Aid, then you be baptized in Kool-Aid. Because that's his show, right? Okay, but he said water. Okay? And he said, like the person who had leprosy, when uh, he went to, um, I think that was, yeah, that was uh, the uh, Isha, Isha and Elijah, Elijah. Okay, when the, um, that general went to Elijah and, and to said he had leprosy, Elijah didn't ask him for anything. Okay, Elijah said, just go in that nasty river and dip yourself seven times. Okay, it was uh, Isha that ran up to the general and said, hey, the master didn't take your money, but I'll take it, okay? He changed his mind, give it to me. And then uh, Esau got the disease on him, okay? See, 
You don't ask, no, all God's word is free. I don't ask any money from any word that I preach. It's free. Everything's free. I give it away. I encourage you to take it, okay? Because God repays me. God's looking at everything the people got for me, and then he's got in the bank account of heaven, and he will repay it. Because you can't repay it to, to back to me, okay? You don't know how to repay it back to me. God can repay it back to me. Now, if God tells you to give me some, okay, well, I appreciate it. If God tells you to buy a program from me that's listed in those uh, GloriousMercy.com or DanielsFire325.com, I appreciate it. Because you know what? If you go to those sites, you know, so, so, you know I, I, if you click on some of those links, I could make some money, right? But nobody has clicked on those links yet. But that's not why I have them there. I mean, I just put them there and say, you know, tarot cards and all that, to see if anyone's going to say, give me anything. Because I really don't think people have any money, okay? I mean, how could they have money after they've been ripped off uh, by so many different things, okay? I mean, all the jets they got paid for and runways and hangers, right? Cars, uh, houses, right? You know, it never ends. Uh, oh, what are they selling now? They're selling anointings. God's anointing. I tell you, when you get the Holy Ghost, you have all the anointings you need, okay? Yeah. And then God will give you what you need at the time you need it, okay? All right. Because that's what Jesus was uh, baptized with the Holy Spirit without measure, and he's got everything right there, and we're inside Jesus. And Jesus gives us what we need at the time we need it. Now, we can't have all the Holy Spirit at once because, you know what, we just can't handle it. But Jesus got it for us, and he gives us what we need at a time. It's like your mama gave you the milk, gave you a meat. She don't put the whole cow on the table for you to eat all at once, does she? She don't give you a whole gallon of milk and just tell you, here, everyone get a gallon of milk and drink what you want. Okay? All the gallon of milk. You know, she puts in the glass and she gives you some slices of meat, she gives you little potatoes. Okay, your mama take care of you. The Holy Ghost is that type of servant. He takes care of you, right? Gives you a glass of milk, gives you potatoes, okay? Well, today you need corn. Yesterday you need mixed vegetables. Next week you need spinach. Okay, rye bread today, wheat bread tomorrow, no bread, rice, okay? The other day after that, okay? Warm on three weeks from now, peaches uh, last week, right? Today is strawberries. No cream this week, but cream next week, right? Okay, the Holy Spirit knows what you need to eat. And uh, oh, no, even, you know, your mama pick out your clothes to wear. When you were younger, okay, you go wear this robe or that robe or give with that hat. Uh, and, and then here you're going to need your daddy, right? He can, you know, knows what you, uh, tools you need uh, to do a job. He says, no, you don't need that big saw. You just need this hammer today. You don't need the hammer uh, right now. Go use a screwdriver, okay? Now, you don't need nothing right now. Go take a break, okay? See? God will equip you as you need it, okay? Now, you don't need nobody to activate your gift, okay? All these people say they're going to activate your gift. Give me $35 here. Give me 50 bucks there, 100 bucks there. They uh, are selling the anointing. They're selling... The activation of your gift okay the Holy Ghost says uh, Jesus said in Acts uh, chapter 1 verse 9 wherever when the Holy Ghost comes upon you you will have power and that word dunamis power of dunamis means like dynamite right okay uh, power when Holy Ghost acts okay all right, let's see what it says. Okay, Acts, verse 1, chapter 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, Samaria and to the utmost part of the earth. Okay, now where does it say? Now see, Jesus died on the cross at Calvary so you can receive the Holy Spirit. 
Now, where does it say that, uh, you, you know, you have to plug in your gift someplace? It says that's the power right there that runs the gift, okay? All right, no matter what gift you got, whatever kind of righteousness you got, whatever, anything from God, you got the power, all the power you need right there. Right there in uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, okay? You don't need no pay no one for it. Jesus paid the bill with his blood. See what they're doing is selling Jesus. Now, you know what? Sometimes they want you to go to their conference meetings and pay like $250 a seat, $350 a seat. For what? Okay, let me look this up here. Okay. I'm just curious. How, I'm not talking about nobody, but how much is like Ken Copeland seat? His might be free. I'm not sure. How much they're gonna make some money some kind of way, maybe books or something. And, and um, um, what they call that? Uh, a meetings or conference? Conference, okay. Okay, and can't go over the conference. Let me see. All right, let me see. Can Copeland's biggest conference? Okay, 2021. Let's see. All right, Southwest Believers Conference. Oh. Now, I don't recommend going to his conferences, okay, because you know what? Uh, uh, he's not preaching the gospel, right? In fact, he, he, he was, he's just preaching Kenneth Hagerin. That's Kenneth Hagerin looked all that up and got all that information. And uh, he's just copying other people. He got, yeah, none of that came from him. To my knowledge. Look, uh, let me see. He's just a copycat, okay? Collecting the money. All right. Uh, it, I don't see... Volunteer opportunities, events, what to expect, why attend. What I'm looking for is how much it costs. I want to expect, okay. Okay, what to expect, okay, I see. Let me see. Now, so I, I wouldn't even go here if it is free. Because, you know why? There was one of these conferences, he was rebuking the Lord on people. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's online. Look at that uh, conference in Canada, that uh, Ken Coburn uh, conference. What's it called? Uh, in Canada, uh, the one that went crazy, the Toronto blessing, the Toronto blessing, Ken Copeland, and put down on Ken Copeland rebuking uh, Jesus or whatever. Um, you'll find it is about a ten part series, and they show you right there on tape. He's on tape when he prays for people. He's telling Jesus to get off these people, and then he's got this uh, this witch with him. Okay. All right, now that we're judge, not judging people, not that God doesn't save people, but you know you gotta be wise, and 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 not, and you gotta be wise in the Lord, and um, you need to grow up a little bit. Now uh, let's see this. Let's look at this in the King James version. Okay, let's see. Do not forsake me, O Lord. This is the King James. Uh, the, the one that's a plus. You can get the uh, eSword.net downloaded and download the King James Version free with the King James Version Plus. And then what happens when you click on the King James Version Plus Bible, uh, you have all these little strong numbers there too. And they show you uh, what every little word means and the correct meaning and in context too. Okay. I'm looking, I don't see nothing really in uh, the first verse. 
displeasure, anger, poison, you know, bottled up anger, hot anger, okay, rage, okay, uh, and arrows, what's the arrow? Okay, that is uh, by implication a wound, a thunderbolt, a shaft or a spear, a dart. Okay, uh, there's no soundness in my flesh. With soundness, wholesome. Now David was in pretty bad shape here. Uh, hit my iniquities in verse four. What does that mean? Avoni, Avoni, that's what I mean. Okay, it says Avoni, Avon, Avani, something like that. Okay, uh, perversity, that is evil, fault, iniquity, mischief, punishment, sin. Okay, that's what happens now, you see? The preacher don't want to preach sin or anything, and people get sick and they die, right? And then the preacher says, well, you know, we prayed for them. You know, we went to the hospital, we prayed for them, right? But how about telling them to stay out of sin in the first place? Why look the other way? Why not, now the, the fam, all the family missing, uh, members are missing, their loved one early. But then you know what? Preachers don't care if you live or die. I don't think so. You know why? Because when somebody dies in the congregation, they get... Uh, Usually the family gives them another 10% of everything they inherited. So it's a quick 10%. So h how eager are you going to pray for somebody that um, is worth like, you know, maybe $300,000? And then if they die, you get $30,000, right? I mean, how e how eager you think they can stay up day and night praying that they don't die? Or are they going to be uh, calculating what they could do with the money and start praying? Or fool themselves and just go to the hospital and stand outside the window waving to them. You know what I mean? Uh, and taking a picture and posting it on their Facebook. So everybody see how wretched they are, right? So they do their prayer in front of people. Okay, and then let's see. Um, first four, for their burden is too heavy for us. A uh, good sense, severe, bad sense. There's a lot of things here, a lot of these words here, you know, and uh, it's just too much to read every single one. Y you know, the, my wound stink, which stink? Okay, it says stink, right? So that means uh, uh, something uh, abhorred or hateful, okay? Loathsome, uh, odious, odious, odor, it stinks, okay? And odorous. Okay, a bad smell. All right, my foolishness. Okay, what is that? Uh, folly, silliness. Okay, uh, bow down. What's that? Okay, to sink, depress, bend, bow, bring, cast down, crouch, humble, self be, bring, low, stoop. You know, this guy was in bad shape, I tell you that. All day long, he's like that bent over. He's got some uh, kind of something in his, uh, he's groaning. His bones are hurt. Uh, nobody wants to be around him. They think they'll catch something, so he's lonely too. His loins, he's got a problem with his loins. Now, that's your muscles right there in the back there. That's what David sinned, right? David sinned with Bathsheba. He used his loins and everything. So he let some evil spirits got in there. All right, evil spirits got in there. Okay, Father. All right, okay. Those um, okay, that we know that's hateful. Something hateful is in there. Uh, okay, his loins are filled with a uh, hateful disease. And there's no soundness in his flesh. Now, what's the word flesh mean? I'll tell you what. He, they even got a definition for flesh. It means uh, flesh. 
extension of the body, person, uh, body, fat, lean, flesh, mankind, nakedness, self, skin, okay, all right, I have roared, okay, uh, roar is to rumble or moan, a mighty roar, by reason of his disquietness. Disquietness. You ever wonder what that means? Oh. It means many senses above, after, among. Over, since, then, through, then, when, with. I think this quietness, okay, okay, quietness, you know what quietness is? Quietness is when you're quiet. But this is this quietness. And this, I know that means not. Not quiet. Okay, I have roared by reason of my disquietness. I'm not quiet. I I'm hurting. I'm in pain. And uh, this quietness of my heart. His heart's in pain. Okay, lonely, nobody's coming to see him. You know, what's going on with him, okay? Okay, people are talking about him. All his enemies are trying to do him in and kill him. And uh, his uh, bones are hurting. He's bending over. He's groaning all day long. Nobody's coming to see him. His family don't want to be around him, right? He's a, it, it, nobody wants him. The only, thing, only hope, hope he's got is God. He's got to help him. If not, if God doesn't help him, he's just out there. Okay, and then you know what? He sinned against God with the Bathsheba. And his loins hurt. So you know what? Even God might not want him. So his heart really hurts. And he knows he's been silly. He knows he's been done wrong. He knows he did the sin and then he deserves all this. Nobody wants him. His enemies are after him. Right? He says, I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of my disquietness of my heart. Feeble, okay? That is uh, sluggish, faint, slacked, and broken. Broken is collapse, break, contract, crouch, okay? Uh, Lord, it says, talk about his desires about him and his groanings. What's a groaning? He's sighing. He's mourning. He's sorry. He's in grief. All right, my heart panteth. What's panteth? To travel around, especially as a, a peddler. Intensively to palpitate. To go about, occupy with, pant, trade, traffic. Okay, he's probably just walking around saying, oh, my back got his hands on his back, his loins and everything. He's going rocking back and forth saying, oh, 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 my, oh, ch oh wow, oh, oh, the Lord, don't help me. Okay, and uh, his strength fell on me. He can't even see. Oh, man, I've just bumped into that cement wall, that stone wall. Oh, man, I hope that I don't bump into the torch and burn myself, you know? And then uh, all his lovers, his friends, his lovers, what did you talk about his lovers, my lovers? Uh, the, uh, sexual affections, okay? Uh, you know, he had, a lot of, he had a lot of wives there. His wives don't even want to be around him. His friends, kinsmen, you know his kinsmen are his relatives and things. <sighs> All right, and basically, that's why you need a King James Plus. Okay, and verse 14 talks about reproofs. Uh, Thus I was as a man that have heardeth not, and in whose mouth are no reproofs. Okay, he talked about he didn't hear nothing. Somebody's accusing him, maybe. Chastisement, correction, uh, reunification, proof, 
So he didn't say nothing to correct them. He didn't speak up for himself. You know, I was a man that didn't hear what they said. I didn't want to hear what they were saying. And I didn't have no words to, uh, you know, stick up for myself. He said, but I am deaf. I'm, uh, but I, as a deaf uh, man, heard not. And I was dumb, and that I opened not his mouth. Okay? So what this is, this is before, like Psalms 22, was a psalm about uh, Jesus on a cross. And this, I believe, is like a psalm after Jesus got whipped on a whipping post, and he was getting ready to see Pilate. And he was going to pronounce, uh, he was seeing Pilate and getting uh, his uh, judgment pronounced. So David was kind of like uh, uh, you know living what Jesus was going to go through in a way okay it, it is like a prophecy almost it, but David did go through this but it's also like a prophecy doubled up as a prophecy uh, what, what Jesus is going to go through you know Jesus has to pay for the sins of the world Okay, he had to pay for David's sin too. He went before Pontius Pilate. He didn't open his mouth. He didn't try to correct Pontius Pilate. And you know what? Uh, he his bones hurt. He was bent over. His loins hurt. Okay. All that, and he don't have no hope. Nobody wants to be around him. Okay, except for God. It's the only hope is in in God the Father. And uh, and look look at his body; it's all whipped and scarred and everything like that. Okay. And I think that as a son of God, he is supposed to what did God tell Adam that he needs to have dominion over the earth. And being whipped and scarred is not having dominion over the earth. So he got away from everybody else, but he didn't this time. So that kind of like he's laying his life down and that would be like he's taking on the sins of the world because to let somebody whip and beat you if you have the power to stop them it's kind of like a sin. But Jesus did not sin because that was the will of his father for him to take on the the uh, sins of the world. Okay, that was the father's plan all along. Verse 17. Sorrow is continued before him, declared iniquity. Okay, not his only iniquity, but he was taking on the iniquity of the world. That's uh, iniquity means perversity. That is moral evil. Iniquity, mischief, punishment of iniquity. And Jesus took on all the iniquity of the world, all of it. And that means he had to take on every sin there was, right? And that's uh, because he was touched by all those sins. So... He was with those Romans for a while, and they were beating him and wherever else. And, and nobody, no one, Lord knows what uh, all they did. Okay, they whipped him and beat him, and what else? I don't know. Okay, I will be sorry for my sin. Okay, verse 19. But uh, mine enemies are lively, and they are strong, and they that hate me are wrongfully uh, multiplied. See, because there's no reason for them to hate the Lord. I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. And, and, and David said he was kind of like, you know what, uh, they're multiplied against them for no reason. Okay? Now, one time I think that David had a, a son, uh, Ab, 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 Abner, no, not Abner, but uh, starts with an A. He got caught up in the, in the, his hair got caught up in the trees. So, if you see some of the movies on King David, you'll notice that guy, uh, his hair was caught in trees. Let me see. David's son. His hair got caught in a tree. Oh, Absalom. Okay. Absalom was rebelling against David at one time. And maybe that's, you know, like a way that his enemies get multiplied against him because Absalom went to town to town preaching against David and, and telling him uh, how his, about his father's displeasure. Absalom, 
unexpectedly came up against David's servants. He was mounted on a mule and was and as the mule passed under the branches of a large oak tree, his hair caught fast in the trees. He hung between heaven and earth while the mule under him kept going. Well, you know, I would thought that was a fast horse he was on. The movie I seen about Absalom, he was on a fast horse. But this one says, Absalom unexpectedly came up, up Absalom unexpectedly came up against David's servants. He was mounted on a mule. And as a mule passed under the branches of a large oak tree, his hair caught fast in the tree. He hung between heaven and earth while the mule under him kept going. But now David's uh, general went up to Absalom and stuck him with a sword and killed him. Okay? And then he reported to David and says, uh, he says, where's my son? He says, uh, uh, he wishes all the king's enemies be as that man uh, Absalom is. That means he killed him. And David didn't want him killed. He wanted to be reconciled with his son. Okay. Forsake not, forsake not, forsake me not, O Lord, O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. And salvation means rescue, literally and frequently, personally, nationally, spiritually, deliverance, help, safety, salvation, and victory. So if you don't have a King James Plus and this e-sword, you see what you're missing. And let me put here, I'm curious, you know, Absalom. Okay, what happened to a person who killed him? Okay, Absalom. Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm going like this. Who killed Absalom? Who killed Joab? Okay, that's the one who have who had a feud, and that what happened. Uh, uh, there was the king of the north that came to see David and then he was going to uh, make peace with the king of the north and then uh, over oh, the general okay he was going to uh, make a deal with the general to get the other king off the throne and he was going to unite Israel but what happened is Joab had blood feud and killed uh, the general and then he and David didn't have a chance to reunite northern, the northern Israel and southern Israel together. But here, Joab killing Absalom was against David's explicit command. Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. And Joab injured Absalom with three darts through the heart. And Absalom was subsequently killed by Ten of Joab's armor bearers. Wow, ten of them. All right, so uh, what happened to Joab? <clears throat> it says the uh, Solomon ordered Joab's death. By the hand of Benaiah, Benaiah, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 29 to 34. Hearing this, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 29 to 34. Hearing this, Joab fled to the tent of the tabernacle, where Adonijah 
had previously sought successful ref refuge. 1 Kings chapter 1, 50-53 And told Benaniah that he would die there. And Benaniah killed Joab there and thereby replaced him as commander of the army. Wow! You see there? Uh, after David died, Solomon ordered Joab's death. Because, see, uh, he wasn't supposed to uh, kill uh, his son. He wanted him captured. So, uh, that was like God. God don't want Jesus died. He, he wanted Jesus to come back to him. And that's what God wishes for all of us. That we would return to him. Okay? That he see us like that uh, man. Uh, he went off to, to the... Uh, he left his father's house. and says, Father, give me all your money. He left and spent on wild living. And he ended up in the pig farm. Pig farm. But he said, well, I'm here eating pig's house because when I could be with my father and everybody eats good at my father's house. So let me turn to my father's house and I'll work for my father as a servant. Okay, and you know what happened? The father seen his son coming far off and he said, make ready the fatted calf, put on the best robe, put a finger, uh, get a finger for uh, a ring for his finger, a ring of authority. And then the other brother says, I've been here all this time and he never didn't make a fat calf for me or, 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 or give me a ring or give me a nice robe. You know what I mean? And uh, he, he, he I got the butt about it, right? But you see, God sees us coming up far off and he does that. He gives us more faith, that's a fat cow. He gives us authority, that's the ring on the finger, right? And uh, the best robe, the robe of righteousness, the robe of many colors, and spiritual gifts and talents and everything. All right. So now, let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, uh, you know, if I was a little rough on the first hour, I'm sorry, Lord, you know, I have to go through the editor before I upload to Google and see if maybe my I was maybe uh, needed, to, you know, edit anything out. But um, it's nothing bad. It's just, you know, you get a little angrier. You know what? I, I didn't realize that society was down that downgraded, you know. Society had gone into the gutter. Okay? Because, you know what? Here here we are. The King Charles thinks he's got to, uh, within eight years, solve the world's pollution planet uh, problem or the, lose the earth. The earth would not be repairable, according to all the scientists. So basically, you think the people are going to listen to him? Uh, do you think the governments are going to, around the world is going to listen to King Charles when he tells them, don't uh, make uh, industry, shut down your factories, you know, uh, stop with the pollution? Because the United States and, uh, and, and Russia just decided to get rid of the nuclear treaty and make as many bombs as they want. So really the only solution is like during the pandemic when uh, the air cleaned up is when everybody stayed home because they were uh, had the uh, pandemic going on. They were locked down. So probably you're going to see that. That's why in, uh, the king, uh, the uh, King Charles is the fourth horse man, the one that's riding the the um, grizzly horse, the pale horse, the color of death. The pale horse is the color of death, and he's riding him because he's releasing, or uh, whoever is on that horse is releasing uh, disease, uh, pandemics, uh, Ebola's. You know, I'm not sure what it will be, but it's a man-made viruses. He's releasing it around the world and causing, like, uh, he wants to reduce, like, the uh, Georgia Guidestones, the population of the Earth, maybe half a million. Uh, and that means maybe uh, only one person of every uh, thousand or something would survive. So that's a lot of death and, and tragedy. 
And then after that, they think there would be a lot of prosperity there. The earth would be clear, cleared, cleaned up and everything because the air would go back to where it needs to be. And the cities wouldn't be destroyed because it just disease would kill them off. And then there would be a lot more houses available and stuff like that. And people could have a, a little bit of a baby boom. Okay? And that's what they're thinking, right? They say, well, we'll let the jungles go back and take the cities. And we'll let the buffalo uh, loose in the United States. And um, we'll build smaller cities. And some cities will just go back to, back to the wild. Like the ghost town, okay? Like in China, you know, they have uh, built all those cities in China. Lots of cities. Uh, just like Disneyland, they built cities to resemble those in the United States, in Paris, in France, uh, Rome, and they got one in uh, Laramie, Wyoming, or something like that, and uh, a few other places around the United States. They built those cities in China, and they're thinking people are going to come to them, but people just bought an investment properly, in investments in those cities, but nobody lives there. So all that's just ghost towns, okay? So all that would just go back to the jungle. So, that's what it's going to be like. And I don't know when all that's going to be taking place. But you know what? Uh, I, I put that link there uh, on the, my first video of the day. If you find it on Facebook. It was uh, Tim Cohen. Tim Cohen. C-O-H-E-N and the name of it was uh, is King Charles the Antichrist over multiple Antichrists okay multiple Antichrists now look that up on YouTube Google on YouTube okay and you know I pray I pay $12 a month for YouTube just $12 and I can watch it ad free I know, I know a lot of people might not have that much money, but you still can watch it. You just have to, you know, just click the ads off every once in a while. But it's very, very enlightening. And take notes as you go because uh, you're going to be shocked. I have not watched it yet. I watched some of it, but not all of it. So let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, please put the blood of Jesus over everybody. Open their eyes and ears, Lord God. Let them understand uh, we want to understand like you understand, Lord. We want to hear like you hear, Lord. We want to love like you love, Lord God. We want to be passionate like you're passionate, Lord God. We don't want to be hateful or judgeful or judging anybody, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Help us, Lord. Help us. Lord. Give us a clean heart. In Jesus' name, Psalms 51, give us a clean heart. Now, read Psalms 51 too, okay? That's your homework. In Jesus' name, or just listen to the video that's coming up. Um, the video, uh, I think it's uh, 41A. I'll tell you which one it is. That's right, 41A, Psalms 38. Okay, it talks uh, the, the world is full of uh, liars. Okay, and we got to be ready for the rapture and, and get, get a clean heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this will be the uh, next time I'm going to be coming up here. It's going to be maybe a Sunday evening. Okay? Yeah. Sunday evening, amen. Okay? Thank you.